All right, in the previous video, we showed how to place an image into your GUI uh, and center it and so forth. Uh, but the um, GTK kit does not resize images. Uh, if you want to put a larger image in and you need to resize it down, it's like you're doing a slideshow or something like that, or if it's a smaller image and you want to um, enlarge it a bit up to a point, um, how do you do that? Well, that's what I'm going to deal with today. It uses other code um, that's outside the GTK package, uh, which is easy enough to download. It's Image Magic. It's part of the Synaptic Package Manager, and it's an install, um, apt get install, so it's simple. <clears throat> First of all, I have a new image I've put in here titled NYA.jpg, and as you can see, uh, if I run my uh, GUI, uh, it's bigger than the GUI, or about the same size. So obviously this image is not going to fit in here. I need to shrink it. All right. Image shrinking. Now I cannibalized this from some other code, so it's a little... Some of the code was not uh, written for specifically for this. Uh, but uh, uh, first of all, down at the end, um, this is where we were doing it. The, um, the old button 3 clicked callback is here. I've commented it out, and we have a new button three uh, clicked callback, and this is where we're doing the dirty work. Okay, first of all, we have uh, changed the file name to nya.jpg, the name of our image. Uh, I've created a string of up to 2048 characters, which is, turns out far too long. Um, I create a file pointer called f1. I've got some variables. I had h and v. Oh, no, I, I had hor and ver, h o r and v e r before. So I've added j, h, and v uh, here. Um, hor and ver were the place where were where to place the image in the GUI. 150 uh, from the left edge and at the top, one pixel one. If image one, same as before, a lot of some of this is the same as before, uh, is not null, then we remove the old image from the container. We hide image two. And we get moving. Now we need to know, uh, we're going to identify the image. Uh, in particular, we want to know the size of the image to find out um, you know, how big it is and uh, if the image actually exists and things like that. So there's a program called Identify. It's part of the Image Magic package. And I pass down to it the parameters format. And I pass down to it, remember, 2% signs means 1% sign. I percent, pass down percent %W, X, percent %H. I'm passing to it a format. It's the format I want the output to come back in. I want the width um, x followed by the height. So I want to get a number like 300x200, where the first number is the width and the second number is the height. I have to tell it the file name, and here's where the file name goes inside the percent %s, um, picks up the file name string. Uh, which is nya.jpg, and quote the file name. Uh, it's a good idea in case the file name has special characters or blanks in it. So backslash quote, because we are in a quoted string. Another backslash quote. The new line character is probably not necessary, but it doesn't hurt anything. I pass this down to CMD, uh, to popen. Popen is like the function system. It will start a shell and it will run the command. Now in the case of system, it just runs the command and comes back to you. In the case of popen, it runs the command in the shell and either reads from your program or writes back to your program in a pipe. It's pipe open, really. So in this case, I'm going to read from the shell. Any output of the shell will be sent to me. It's coming back through the pipe, and it will be accessible through the file pointer F1, which is what I get back. I get back a uh, file pointer to the, to the pipe and so I can read what the shell writes. The other version of that is W. Um, in which case the shell will read from your program. Um, so you can't do both. You either do one or the other, read or write. So I'm doing read. I'm going to read the output of the shell uh, into uh, my program. That's how I get the information from Identify back. I, um, so I've run the program, and uh, the pipe is open. Pipe's got its stuff. I zero out command because, of course, I don't need it anymore. It's been used. I read the, fir the line coming in from the file. I read the line. Zeroing out, zeroing out the line is important because, uh, or CMD, because it's going to be the target of fgets. And if fgets fails, um, it does not zero um, CMD. It does not uh, make it an empty string. Uh, so if it's an empty string, you know that it didn't work. All right. Close F1. Make sure you close your, uh, your 
your pipes and so forth, um, or problems develop. Set H and V both equal to 1. Check the length of CMD. If the length is 0, it means something went horribly wrong. Um, the, the file didn't exist, uh, the file was in a bad format, uh, who knows, but anyway it came back zero, it, in which case you don't have anything to work with. That would take you down here since H and V are both less than zero, uh, excuse me, um, less than a hundred. Uh, we would print out an error message to the uh, terminal and we'd return. You could probably turn back image to turn image to visible again, but anyway that's what I did. Um, if it's non-zero length string, I start chugging along it, starting J at zero, and until I get up to one less than the uh, length of the um, of the uh, of, of the string that came back in, because I don't want to look at the new line character, the new line character is at the end, and so I go up to length uh, minus one. F gets reads new line characters, uh, incrementing each time, looking to see if an individual character in the string is the letter X. If it is the letter X, I break. Um, I check it again. Are you the letter X? Uh, if it is not the letter X, well, then I'm back down here and I'm exiting. Okay. Uh, if it is the letter X, because I've got part of the format, it, X should be the only character in the return string. The others, all the other characters, should be numbers. Um, if it is an X, I put a zero in it, which means it, it terminates it. The string is now terminated. From the beginning of the string, it terminates where the X was. That's the null or the end of end of character end of string marker that C uses. Um, then I do an scanf reading from CMD from the beginning into H. Notice the ampersand because you have to pass an address of the variable. It's going to read into the variable H the number it sees. There'll, there'll be a number. And where the X was, there's a zero, which is a terminator. Okay, so that is the first number. It's the horizontal number. The second number <coughs> will begin at J plus 1. J pointing to the place where the X was. J plus 1 is the st first character after the X. So I pa so starting at the first character after X, notice I have to pass down an ampersand, or excuse me, an address. So I'm passing the address of the byte immediately after um, where the X was. But is not there anymore. I mean, I don't care about it anymore. And I do the same thing. I uh, read uh, with a uh, read from the string with a um, integer conversion into um, into the variable v. Again, notice the ampersand. Okay. So at this point here, when I exit, when I get down to here, if I get to this point, it means I, I it, I've got an h and a v, and they're and they're not less than 100. Um, so things went okay up to a point. Now I want to resize it. Um, here's the resize, 420 by 250. I want the image to fit into that box. Uh, because of the ratio of the image, it may be taller than it is wide, or maybe wider than it is tall, it will fit it into a box which is no greater than 420 by 250. In order to do this, it won't, act, it won't necessarily be a 420 by 250. It'll be some number, but neither of those numbers will exceed 420 or 250. One of them will be 420, and the uh, or 250. Uh, but the other one, who knows? It could be any. It, by luck, it could actually be you know the other number, but most likely it's not going to because the ratios. You can't predict what the ratio is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to convert the image. Um, convert again is also part of Image Magic. It's easy to download. I give the name of the file that I'm going to convert. The parameter is going to again. We're going to call a, a bash shell to do this. Um, tell it to resize, and um, now I give it the format in number x number. Well, the first number is the width, and the second number is the height. Um, so percent sign d is uh, going to be replaced by the width. The percent sign d here is going to be replaced by the height. This tells it the dimensions of the image I wish to get. And what's it going to do with it? Well, it's going to create a file called temp.jpg. Call this anything you want. That's the file that will be created that will be Conform and it'll conform to the dimensions I gave. Uh, so uh, we when this and then I system uh, system just runs the command doesn't read anything doesn't write anything it just runs the command. Uh, when the uh, command runs, uh, presumably I've got a, a temp.jpg, um, and so I change the file name to temp.jpg. File name is recreated each time you enter the uh, enter enter the routine. It's not a static file name, so it will be recreated. Um, on entry into the um, into this function. All right. Um, 
the having done that this this set of code here i'm really it's the same as the code up above it's going to when you and i'm not going to go through it because i just did, went through it um it's going to go back in and look at um temp.jpg and find out exactly how big are you what are your exact dimensions so when i get down here h and v are the new dimensions of um of the image uh, which will be within the parameters of you know what you what you specified above for the maximum height and width um, but with this information you could more sophisticatedly center the image in your gui if you know the width of the gui you know the width of the image you can calculate where the exact center should be and how far from the left edge you should um, you should uh, place the image you can get the uh, exact height size of your gui there is a function for that um, and so the, if you want to do more precise calculations i'm not doing it it's just a bunch of arithmetic um, your problem not mine but anyway at this point and i don't use this information here but there is how it, you would get the actual uh, horizontal and vertical of the new image which is J, which is temp.jpg all right um, so having said that we move on um, the image, uh, the this is again the pre as, as in part 15, we get the image from file. Uh, the file is of course uh, temp.jpg. Uh, we add the image to the container. We show the image. Uh, we move the image uh, to hor and ver, which were set way at the top here at uh, 150 and 1. You noticed if I didn't flash by that too quickly. But that's what they were, and it's the same as they were in the other uh, other program. So I, I reposition the image on into the GUI at uh, offset from the left edge by HOR and offset from the top edge by VER. So one's 150, the other's 1. And uh, then, um, it's kind of optional, um, delete temp.jpg. You don't need it anymore. So that's it. Does it work? Um, well, it compiles. Um, there it is. Okay, um, so if I click this button, I should see this image, this big image, reduced and fit in here. And uh, bingo, there you are. Uh, it's resized it. Uh, now, if you were doing a GUI and you had images of various sizes and you wanted them to fit according to the way you want it, uh, sh enlarged or shrunken as needed, uh, this is how you would do it. Now you can see this is not exactly centered. It's uh, it should be a little further to the um, to the right here. Um, but no, but in the program, the information as to exactly how wide this is is known. Exactly how tall it is as well. And I didn't do it, but you can get the width of your GUI if you don't know it already. Um, but you, it's a dynamic thing. You could actually see. I can change the width of the GUI by simply dragging the image. So, uh, doing it at real time, there is a function. I can't remember the name of it right now, which gets the width of the um, of the parent window, and uh, that with that information and with the information as to how wide the actual image is, you could calculate where the midpoint is and exactly where this e this edge should start relative to the midpoint and therefore relative to the left edge. Everything is calculated relative to the left door top edge <coughs> but there you are resizing isn't that amazing